fingers hurt. What was that? I said my fingers hurt. Oh, well now your back's gonna hurt because you just pulled landscaping duty. Hi, this is Mike from 70s Big. I don't know, I was trying to do like a Mark Bell thing. See ya. Anyway, uh, so some questions. Uh, there are a lot of them. First thing, uh, I'm not a doctor. So a lot of these questions are super specific. And yeah, a lot of things you should probably talk to your doctor about. But I'm going to address every question that I have. So the first one that I have here is from Corey. Uh, and he was asking about uh, powerlifting rule books. Is there any good intro to powerlifting reading you would recommend to learn how meets go, weight classes, how to prep, uh, different experience classes? Okay. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say... Okay, so... First thing you want to do is read the rule book for the Fed you're going to be in. Uh, second thing you need to, you need to practice uh, the commands for that specific Fed and make sure that you are doing your lifts. Uh, if you're going to lift out of a mono lift with wraps, uh, if you're going to do a bench where you're, or you can and you're in a Fed where uh, you can lift your head off the bench, you can have your feet up. You need to know all those things. Uh, now, good intro to powerlifting reading. Uh, not really that I found. Uh, I look at a lot of different things and I, I, uh, I see what a lot of different people do. Um, other than opening light and seeing what other people have successfully done over the course of their career, I mean, not really. I mean, don't worry about making weight for your first meet. Uh, have a good ballpark of what you're going to be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about cutting or anything. Uh, go open light, try to PR. Uh, another question from Dan. He's asking about uh, programming for bench and press uh, on, on the Texas Method Light Day. Uh, in particular, he's asking about figure 2.5. And Justin's protocol is a light bench and a medium press. Okay, so light bench week one, light uh, medium press week two. Uh, so I talked about it with, with Chris yesterday, and uh, our theory is that, yes, Justin, meant to say uh, what he wrote and the reason for that is your uh, your press is generally only going to be I mean if you're a really good presser it's probably going to be let's say two thirds of your bench uh, uh, perhaps even more but I mean that's that'd be a solid press uh, that's somewhere around where ACs is so if you were to do the same intensity for your press you might not get enough uh, enough of a, a stimulus on that uh, on that light week you know, you might only you might not be pressing enough, so that's why it's uh, like a medium press uh, for medium intensity. I get, I, I mean, I would look at the pr uh, prolepsis chart. Uh, I like to go by that for uh, for intensity. So yeah, that's also going to depend on you know how much what your current lifts are at and what your ratio for your press to your bench is. Uh, okay, other questions. Let's see. Question from Alex regarding what to do in between heavy sets on an intense volume day. Uh, he's asking if he should walk around or do anything else, do stretches or anything. I, I wouldn't. Uh, maybe on a, a lighter day you could do something else, but on, a, uh, on an intensity day, uh, I would just focus on getting the lift done, uh, whatever. I mean, if you get really psyched up like AC does, like I sometimes do, uh, like Chris does at times. You know, you might want to do that maybe one or two minutes out, uh, depending on how long you have in between sets. Uh, do your best to do something to kind of relax. I mean, don't get, you know, don't get lazy, but uh, don't, you know, get your heart rate all jacked up five minutes before a set. So when you get to, when you finally get to do your set, you're all tired. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but no, I wouldn't really, I mean, I wouldn't mope. I wouldn't walk around too much. Uh, if you've ever seen any of us at a meet, you know, it's kind of, it's sometimes difficult in between attempts to sit down and Justin would always have to consciously come over and be like, hey, sit down, sit down, stuff like that. So it's probably best to just take it easy. Uh, okay, I got another question from Noah. All right, so Noah fractured his manubrium. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he's talking about it right now. He's doing some, uh, some dumbbell benching, dumbbell pressing. Uh, before you do anything, I would really, uh, I, you really need to talk to your doctor uh, about whether or not you are able to uh, start incorporating uh, barbell 
pressing back into your routine. Uh, if your doctor says it's okay, then yeah, I, I would take it easy. I would start doing it again. But uh, again, something you really need to uh, talk to your doctor about. And uh, good luck on your CPAP. All right, let's go to the questions on the Facebook page. Mike, how do you feel about small love from Ryan? How do I feel about small love? Uh, in my opinion, it's too much volume, uh, too high of frequency, and then it, you know, the intensity is really high for how often you do it. Uh, so no, I wouldn't do it. Uh, I mean, if you really felt that it was, if you only wanted to improve your squat, then sure. Um, I would say it's better for all of your lifts and, uh, at the risk, you know, so that you don't get injured, uh, I wouldn't squat that often. No, unless you're, uh, yeah, unless you're in a particular situation where you're only going to squat, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't do it. Uh, question from Owen about his dad getting hip surgery. Again, yeah, you need to talk to your doctor. Uh, if the doctor says he can squat, uh, then yeah, maybe get him to squat, but don't, uh, I'm not going to give any specific advice for someone that's about to have hip surgery. Uh, so talk to your doctor, see what the doctor says he thinks your dad can do. Uh, my dad has also had hip surgery, so I would say, uh, you know, good luck to your dad. I hope everything works out for you. Uh, okay, uh, question from Harry regarding knee pain. How do I decide if I should lay off squatting or train through it? My only guess is to try to determine if it feels better or worse the same day after squatting. Okay, yeah, I would say that's uh, that makes a lot of sense. So if it if squatting is making it worse, uh, then you might have to reduce the frequency or the intensity of you know of your squat. If it's that bad, uh, go see a doctor, or uh, don't squat and uh, see what happens. I'm not saying don't do anything, but uh, if squatting is the is the issue uh, and your mobility is not the problem then, uh, yeah, consider going to a doctor, consider re reducing the frequency or intensity. Okay, question from Dane. This is uh, super specific. He's telling me about his PRs on his lifts. What should I do for f first, second, third attempts? Look, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about your training. Uh, I don't know how hard those gym PRs were for you. Uh, my personal opinion is going to be contact someone like Chris. Uh, ask him about specific programming advice. My advice to you is open light. Open with something you can for sure destroy. Uh, second attempt, again, do something that's not that you're going to get. Uh, and then third attempt, maybe go for a 5-10 pound PR. Uh, if this is your, let's see, it doesn't say if it's your first meet, but if it's your first meet, you know, don't worry about going crazy. Just go out there, have fun, uh, get some experience on the platform, and go from there. Uh, Matthew asks a question about weighing in on increasing frequency the three main lifts versus something like a standard 531. Okay, uh, I don't exactly know what you want to know here. Uh, I, I mean, 531 to me is not, you're not performing the lift often enough. Uh, is it going to be good for a, uh, a general person that's just trying to stay in shape? Sure. If you're uh, peaking for a powerlifting meet, I've never read 531 for powerlifting. Uh, but the standard 531 to me is not enough uh, to get you better over the long term. <laughs> you know, years. Uh, I'm not sh Okay. Increasing frequency. Yeah. I, I mean, 531 doesn't really. It has you. You know, the frequency is the frequency of the 531 program. It's not really. You're not really increasing it as far as I understand. So, yeah, I would go with uh, something like starting strength of the Texas method. Uh, Mike, I've seen a lot of articles that do leading up to me, but nothing to do after me. Okay, uh, this is heavily dependent on the individual. Uh, Chris says he's going to take time off and then starts training like two days later. Uh, regular volume. Not, not, not quite regular volume, but he tries to get back and do it pretty quickly. Me, I, I take it pretty easy for about a week. Uh, I tend to not recover as well as he does. So, uh, especially after a strongman meet, I'll take a little more time off. I'll take, it'll be a pretty easy week. And then the second week I'll ramp it up slightly, uh, but it's going to depend on the individual. Uh, how much time do you try to have between meets? It depends. I mean, uh, I don't recommend, I was reading uh, someone yesterday that did nine, you know, nine meets in nine weeks. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, I think the risk for injury is too high and I, 
unless you're a professional athlete, uh, I don't see I don't see why you would do that. Uh, I don't think that much platform experience is beneficial. Uh, how do you use meat lifts to recalibrate training? Uh, I mean, it, it might change your percentages on your volume days and your intensity days slightly. I uh, don't know how much of a huge PR you're going to hit on everything. I mean, if you were, got in there and, um, you know, hit a 50-pound PR on squat, 25 PR on bench, you know, 75-pound PR, PR on deadlift, then, yeah, you might uh, – this is from Christopher, by the way. Uh, you might dramatically alter your percentages, but, I mean, if it doesn't change that much, your PR doesn't go up very much, then just slightly rethink the uh, the intensity on your volume days. All right, Tyler has uh, – some bursitis and that's acting up when he's squatting uh so yeah uh talk to your doctor <laughs> i don't want to sound like a jerk here but uh yeah I, I don't know if you should train through it i i don't know if you've actually been diagnosed with that or if that's just what you think it is uh but i wouldn't say you were uh, being soft or not being hardcore or whatever uh you're only gonna have one hip until you get it replaced so yeah, I would talk to a doctor. Uh, okay. Javier asks, should I add milk on a paleo diet? I mean, I think you can get calories another way. If, you have, if you're eating a strict paleo diet, I don't see why you would add milk. Uh, am I maybe lifting too much weight for me? Um, you need, I, if, you, if you've read Justin's book, Paleo for Lifters, uh, you could probably stand to eat more meat. Uh, that, that's the only thing I could think of. Uh, if you're not recovering that well, uh, I mean, I'm novice with standards can not increase the weight five pounds per day. Should I put less weight, restart linear progression? Okay, let's say uh, if you're doing a linear progression and you know you're trying to add five pounds per time and you can't, maybe, yeah, maybe back off 10 pounds uh, and go from there. I mean, tr not restart the linear progression, but take a step back. Try to improve your efficiency with those, uh, with a slightly lower weight and, you know, try to break through that plateau I guess uh, t -t 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 when following a linear progression when is it bed at better best to add assistance work this is from Sam I found that my own experience progress stalls due to a weakness and say the upper back to hold the weight rather than actual leg strength uh, I wouldn't I mean I would go with what you, you know your program calls for if you're doing a linear progression I, I don't know that you need that much assistance work uh, I guess you'd be pulling probably once a week. Uh, if I mean, if if you're really stalling on all of your lifts, then yeah, consider switching to something more intermediate like the Texas method. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't start adding a ton of assistance work to linear progression because linear progression is the way it is for a reason. Uh, okay, Kyle asks, what's a percentage breakdown for your strongman training between traditional lifts and event style lifts? Volume, frequency, intensity of event training. Okay, uh, I thought about this one for quite a, quite a bit yesterday. Uh, so, like the, for the presses, for let's say let's uh, take a log press and the uh, axle press for example. Uh, the log to me is more difficult. My log press is not where my push press or my axle press is. So I'd say the the log press, uh, you know, I turn it to a similar intensity uh, and at a similar frequency, similar volume, uh, but I'm, I'm I'm not as able to get as much uh, as much weight on the on the log as I am with the push press. Uh, I, also, I haven't tried. Uh, I haven't tried to match my uh, push press and axle press PRs with a with a log, but I I'm still a pretty much a novice with the log. Uh, but yeah, the axle. Uh, yeah, I try to keep my volume, frequency, intensity roughly the same as my press and push press. Uh, the something like the yoke. Uh, that's. I mean, that's. I haven't really found. Uh, what like my you know what's the heaviest that I can take the yoke up to yet? Um, I'm doing it every other week for now uh, in order to get ready for the Clydesdale Games in June. Uh, but you know I'm taking it relatively heavy every two weeks. Uh, stones, you know I, I was uh, I watched a video that Clint Darden did a while ago that says you can do stones multiple times per week. I personally. You know, lately I've been doing stones once a week. I'm going to continue to do that for a while uh, with lighter stones. Probably once I start doing using the heavier stones again, probably every second Saturday I'll uh, I'll work up to a heavy a heavy set with the stone. But the stones, I mean, I think that's something you can do at the end of a a, a squat or deadlift session on a Saturday. Uh, 
guess that's really it. Do I mean do your best to keep the volume, frequency, intensity very similar to your other lifts, uh, unless you're not recovering very well. The log, if you're cleaning every single rep, you're that's probably going to be pretty uh, pretty challenging after a while. So maybe only clean it once, and uh, yeah, go from there. Robbie asked, "What was it like meeting me?" Man, it was fantastic. One of the best experiences of my life. Uh, let's see. James asked for powerlifters that tend to grind and are very explosive out of the hole off the chest floor. Out of the hole off the floor slash chest. How to address this? Lots of dynamic work, staying the lighter end for volume day. Lots of pause squatting and benching on volume day. Crystal meth. Would recommend that. Percentages for speed dynamic work for all lifters. West side 50 to 65. Raw should be 60 to 70, maybe higher. Okay. Uh, man. So without. Again, without knowing your program, without knowing any of your lifts, uh, how long you've been lifting, anything like that, I don't necessarily what know uh, what's going to work for you for your uh, for getting out of the hole in the squat, off the chest, on the bench. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people recommend pause squats. I personally never tried them. Uh, pause bench that that might help. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't pause every single week, but yeah, try to get maybe a little more pause work in. I don't know about lots of dynamic work. Uh, maybe some would help. Uh, you know, I alternate my on my intensity days: uh, dynam dynamic squat, dynamic uh, deadlift. When I do, you know, the opposing lift to an intensity, uh, about ninety percent. You know, the other one I take up to like sixty. You know, for the dynamic work, uh, maybe sixty closer to seventy. So you said raw power lift. There's a little higher. Intensity, sure, sure. I mean, 60 to 70 percent is probably uh, probably better for a raw lifter. Yeah. And V asks the final question. Uh, I'm using. I was trained using the scoop method with Coach Bergner. Uh, I looked up the scoop method. I really had no idea what you were talking about. Uh, I I don't. I, I mean, bar arch and thigh bump and less vert. I mean, I understand less vertical travel, obviously. Uh, bar arch and thigh bump. Uh, I don't exactly know what you're referring to. I apologize. Uh, maybe Jacob would be better off answering that question. I, 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 I'm i sorry. I'm not going to BS you. I really don't know what you're talking about. So this ended up being about 17 and a half minutes. My goal was 10. See ya. A little bit longer. But if you have more questions, please let me know. Uh, just do me a favor in the future. You know, if it's something really specific and I don't know anything about your training history or your current uh, situation that I'm not going to be able to help you as well. So please try to keep the questions as general as possible. Additionally, uh, like I said, I'm not a doctor. If you've fractured, broken something, having surgery, I'm not really going to be able to give you advice for that. Uh, my advice is always going to be talk to a doctor. And if you don't like what the first doctor says, go to another one. Uh, see what they say. Get a second opinion. You know, obviously all of us want to get stronger, so... You know, the, the doctor that says, hey, you can get back faster by doing this, or the, the doctor says, why would you squat anyway? Probably don't talk to him anymore. Go with the one that says, you know, I can get you back to where you need to be uh, quickly. So that is it from 70s Big and Mike and my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to go mow my lawn after I make my shakes at night. So I guess I'll see you next week. Okay, see ya.